I don't know if that's supposed to all be on camera, but it's fun. Hi, I'm Sly Squid from Bad Publicity Broadcasting. Uh, you might have seen our, our video on uh, breaking down cards. So this is going to be a video where we kind of put that into play. I'm not going to reference that too much. I'm just going to go through my deck and uh, kind of show you why I'm running it. Um, first things first. If you would like to submit a deck for us to review or talk about or kind of get online that you think is kind of fun, go to Bad Publicity Broadcast, all one word, at gmail.com, and we'd like that in Word Files or from CardGameDB, CardGameDB.com. Um, that's the easiest way for us to do it, so yeah, we'd like you to do that. So I'm going to dive right in, I'm going to talk to my, my, my good buddy Shake, and I'm going to hop into my uh, tickle trunk here. And pull out my car. This made Caleb laugh, I think. Referencing. Uh, referencing. Mis bad Mr. Dress Up. Okay. <laughs> so, first things first. I'm the guy running the new Gen Techie. I love it. I love it for a couple reasons. It lets me pinpoint the runner into an area that I like. And it's the first part of my little maze that I like to run. So, this deck is built to waste your time. Um, it might not be the best deck. Uh, hopefully you disagree with everything I'm saying and we can play one day and I can show you how kind of cool it is. But I'm going to go through the cards quickly and then I'll kind of show you, I'll break down my play style. So, first things first is my agendas. These are pretty standard right now in the meta that we're running. Uh, Brain Trust scores for three. It gives you two agenda points. This is a flawless card in this deck um, for a reason that I'll talk about later. Um, Miki, not loving the score for four, um, but unfortunately, where are you going to go with that? So um, I can understand because its ability is, is, is amazing. But in this deck, I'm looking for things that I can score with three. Um, keeping in mind that it's got the two-point agenda. So that's something that's really handy. Fetal AIs run Gen Techie decks now. Everybody has them. This is, a, this is an agenda that I don't really consider an agenda. At least in my mind, it's kind of a throwaway. I put it down kind of hoping to bait uh, the runner into hitting it. And then just to show up my 20 points, I have a terrible private security force. I hate this card. Uh, there's a new card coming out that I can't wait to replace it with. Um, those are the agendas. Now we're going to move on to operations, because there's far less of them than there is anything else. Three hedge funds. Why would I not run hedge funds? We have Neural EMPs. Three Trick of Lights. These are the things that help me score Miki a little bit better. Um, it's going to let me um, advance uh, my ice walls, um, and then I'm going to be Trick of Lighting onto that. Did you run June Bugs? Yes. So you can talk about how it makes June bugs not useless too, if they find them out. Caleb says the June bugs aren't useless if they find them out. <laughs> if you if you find out a June bug, you're gonna trash it. <laughs> if the runner finds if the runner finds a June bug and you have trick of lights in your deck, it's not such a bad not not such a bad thing that you've put two advancement tokens on it or four advancement tokens on it because then with trick of light you can then move them onto an agenda later on. So it doesn't matter that they found it. Caleb also plays Gen Techie. He obviously didn't hear when I said that I explained the cards afterwards, so he doesn't, he doesn't play well. Shipment from Cayugas! I love this card! If you don't run it, uh, I don't know how else to tell you. It's amazing, especially in the kind of deck that I run. That's going to be a card that I touch on a little bit later. So we're gonna, I'm going to keep a couple of the cards that might be weird for you aside, and I'll explain them. There's a couple cards, like snares, you don't really have to explain. kind of keeps your R&D really handy. You don't want people making a lot of runs at your R&D. June bugs. Why would I not run them? Everybody runs June bugs. If you're playing Gen Techie, that's probably the first card that you were like, this card is awesome. I'm going to run it. So, now, I'm going to blare through the rest of these cards real quick because um, the rest of my assets, because it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to lead more into the play style rather than the cards that I'm running themselves. So I have three pad campaigns on my deck in my deck. Those are some of my income, but it also works towards the actual uh, build of the deck. These are my new uh, mining corpse, my new fancy mining corpse that I won at the tournament that we just played in. 
Then I have my Zabat suit loyalties. Anybody who saw our card review, that's my proof that I own three of them. And they're all in my deck. Now we're going to get to the ice, which is kind of the afterthought in this deck, as opposed to the assets and agendas. So, keeping with the theme that I want the runner to waste as much time as possible, I am going to be running three Vipers. Vipers I love. Um, they splash for one. I think this card, I don't know how big it is in your meta, but if it's not being used, then this card is great. We have three Enigmas along the same line. It's got an end run in it. It's just, it's, it's working really well with my deck. I want you to run into a server that I've built specifically for you to run into and waste your time. Now we got Ice Walls. This is a card that combos very well with Trick of Light. I like on turns where you don't really have much to do, you have a fair amount of money, and, and the runner the runner is scared a lot when he when when he's running against me because he knows that the way I play there's there's a lot of there's a lot of things that are gonna damage him. So I like having the ice walls down because they're gonna let me stockpile a good amount of of advancement tokens on that I can trick of light afterwards. So my last card that I have, three neural katanas. Um, they're really cheap. They really work, and they kill Jameson every time we play. That's him laughing in the background. You heard it. Okay, we're going to break down the deck a little bit. Um, because this deck runs, uh, you're basically running through the primary server, I'm going to build servers that you have no real choice but to take a bad effect. Um, and I'm also going to kind of make sure that you're going to be running into nothing. I know that's really hard to do with the R&D. So the R&D in this kind of deck, you have to really, really um, just not care about. That's what the snares and that's what the fetal AIs are there for. You want to make the runner think that he's going to die. So the main way I play this deck is I will have my core servers like this. We'll say that these cards are my... my uh, want one of those in play. But I want to have as much ice, well, maybe two or three ice in front of my decks, okay? And I want these ice to be front-loaded right here, okay? Now, by front-loaded, I, I want to kind of make them like an NBN. Um, I want it to have an effect that's going to do something to you right away. And then, I want to have as many servers out as possible, okay? whether it's 3 or 4 to 11. The more servers, the more scared that the runner is going to be. And these servers are all going to be um, traps or things that the runner is not going to really want to interact with. Um, I like having cards that bait them into running at it. That's why I love my mining corporations, because the mining corporations I can keep face down until I want to use them. There's nothing like when you have... 11 servers out, and then all of a sudden, I'll just flip it over and gain 7 gold. That makes the runner hate when hate the fact that they never know exactly how much money I'm going to have. My money fluctuates a lot. Um, when that happens, the runner tends to make runs just to try to start seeing things that I find is just not a good scenario because they're going to be running into my snares, they're going to be running into um, Project June Bugs, um, Zabat suits, which are really hard to trash. Um, all of these things are built to waste the runner's time. Now, I talked about combos, so let's talk about a couple combos in my deck. Okay, that's a good that's a good picture there. <laughs> my friends are uh, really making it hard to be the only host on the, on the thing right now. <laughs> so. There's, is that the only one? Okay, good picture. All right. So, a good scenario that I like to pull off is I like to go with this. I'm going to take out um, a pad campaign, a pad campaign, a snare, and uh, a brain a brain trust. This would be a good scenario of how I play my deck. First things first is you have to build up the central servers as much as possible. Okay? What does that mean? Pull them closer to me. Pull them closer to me. Okay. These cards are out of frame. 
Now you're behind the fourth wall. <laughs> okay, you're going to want to ice up your core servers. Um, primarily because that's where they're going to make the runs. It seems like the, how open my other cards are going to be is they're going to want to run there. But in reality, a lot of the, a lot of the, the runs are going to be made at um, the core servers. So when somebody gets too scared to run at the central servers, they're just going to make consistent runs at the central servers. So you want to be able to ice those up really well. Then I'm going to take three cards, and this is kind of a little trick to, to a lot of people, which makes them think that it's very random. Um, I simply shuffle it as a little bit of a bluff, but it makes people think that there's an agenda in there. Right now we know there is, but we don't know where. So, there are three things that I want on the table right now, and they're all being shuffled right now. One of which is going to deal three points of damage and give you a tag. The other one, I'm going to be able to score next turn. The other one is going to give me a dollar every turn. So, this is going to make the runner go through a lot, a lot of ideas in his head if he sees this type of scenario. Ice up my central servers, and I just put three remote servers down nowhere. First thought in your head is that's a trap and it's going to kill me. He didn't protect them at all. Which, they'll quickly run into the fact that I'm not going to protect anything. I'm going to just keep building on this. So, the runner is going to make a run. Hopefully running into a Viper. I haven't set these things up. Running into a Viper or an, an, an Enigma. Um, which is going to make them lose more clicks, which we want to do. So, I want to try to bring them down to only being able to make one run at here. Now, assuming they're not too scared, they're going to pick a card, okay? So we're going to go with this card right there. That was a pad camping. We know that there's an agenda there. We know that there's an agenda in there. I don't know where it is, and that's kind of why I like to shuffle. I don't like to give any tell of what I know. So um, that could have very well been a snare, which is that card. So let's say you made the second choice. Now you saw that I shuffled them, I had no idea. So I was making choices just like you would have been. So now, first things first is you made a run and you noticed that I had a pad campaign. You probably spent money to trash it, which is fair. And now you ran into a snare. So it's going to be the last thing you do and it's going to be giving you a tag, which I'm going to use to trash your resources, so on and so forth. So let's say that those were the only two runs you were able to make. Next turn, I use $3, score that. It's out of play. Um... That's kind of the trick to the deck. Uh, there's not much more to it. I This might not be the best deck out right now. Um, there is a lot more to, to it than just what I explained. Uh, you'll find little niches that you're able to do. Um, and, and, and it boils down into a, into a deck that takes a very long time to play. Because there, it's it's you're just creating a lot of corridors for uh, the runner to run through. So it, I found that it was pretty hard to play in tournaments. So there could be a more efficient way to run in tournaments. So I would say that that's a downside to this deck. Uh, but I think the upsides outweigh the downsides a lot. It is really fun to play this deck. I feel that when I win with this deck, it was based off of everything that I chose to do. This, I feel, is a great representation of me. I like to bluff. I like to, I like to get as much tricks out as possible. So game time in tourneys, I'm getting told I should, I should talk about. Um, game time in tourneys is between an hour and an hour and 15 minutes. So it's not a whole lot of time. When I was playing in a tournament, this deck took about 45 minutes to run. Um, so that's, that's kind of steep. If, you, if you're looking to get quicker games out, this might not be the deck for you, but this deck, I just have so much fun playing. And a huge asset in tournaments is this deck stands out like a sore thumb in the Haas Byroid Glacier decks, or the Tower of Power decks that they're referring to, and the Tag and Bags. Tag and Bags are great decks, Tower of Powers are great decks. We can't argue with it, but a lot of people bring decks to fight those decks. So this is a very scary thing to sit across the table from because it just has so many ways of killing them. Um, I'm going to talk about quick what I want to do to this deck. A little, little bit of changes. Uh, Hourglass is coming out soon. I'm going to re be replacing the Enigmas with Hourglass. I do have um, the points to spend in there already. And um, Ronin is going to be a card that's going to make this deck sing. I am going to be putting Ronin in because I want 
to start leaving the advancement tokens on Junebug and Ronin, making the runner know that there's a 50-50% chance that I could score a card that's going to deal 3 damage to them next turn. So I want to kind of bait them into running at it, and possibly running into Junebugs. I'm going to get more on that when we talk about Ronin, because it's going to be a card that I'm going to want to uh, review. I'm salivating for that card. Uh, anyway, that's how I run my Genteki, so for anybody who has been checking it out, that's how it is. Yeah. So anyway, like, subscribe, give us a thumbs up. I'm Sly Squid. That was uh, Con Man and Jameson, my friends. Okay, let's do it up.